So I've got a project going and it's this panel stand. It's, uh, I'm excited about it because it's, it's fun to build stuff. It's fun to create stuff with our hands, but it's also gonna serve huge purpose for me here at the Paint Education Training and Production Center. So I wanted to walk you through not only what it is, why I'm doing it, but also I'm gonna show you some tips on how I made it. So it's a 67 Fairlane front end. We've got the radiator support, left and right fender, and a hood. So what this does, it gives me a three-dimensional shape to do demos on. It's also a clue as to what one of my next videos is gonna be. I'm gonna do a course called Elite Surface Correction, and it's gonna be um, how to polish to a high show car level. Now, I'm still a student of this discipline, but I do have my chops. I've been doing it for a long time, but it's a constant learning process, and it's fascinating. For instance, I can teach you how to sand and polish a flat area. Sure, that's easy, that's simple mechanics. That's talking about layers and, and just a process of refinement. But what about this? What about how to polish up against this area right here? What about have to, having to polish inside those areas and where these coves are and creases are? And if you look at this, it comes like this. It's not a flat fender. There's a peak and a kind of a swell, a crown, and then another peak, and then down here, it's a really complex shape. And it takes a bit of strategy and some understanding of the materials and the process to get it right. So that's one of the courses coming up. Um, here's a clue. We've also got a Fairlane quarter panel and a door. That's gonna be another stand for another course called Elite Surface Creation. Not correction, creation. And it basically, it's, it's the uh, school of blocking, how to, how to block panels. We can't have a nice flat straight paint job without a nice flat straight panel. And we're gonna walk you through doing that. It's gonna be a really intensive course. I'm very excited about that too. Here's the stand, I'm just gonna show it to you. So it's the fenders on a stand. We've got locking casters, thank you, um, Tractor Supply. They were inexpensive. They're a 350 pound rating per. Uh, there's swivel casters. I've got two of them that lock and we can, uh, I, this thing will hold itself still on a hill. Now these things right here are interesting. Just this knuckle right here and the knob comes from a company called Astro Pneumatic. That's who makes this stand right here. They call this their super stand. It's really kind of neat. It's kind of a rotisserie. You can do, uh, it's got a little gear cog here, but these clamps, I really like them because you can position the mounting arms in a bunch of different positions and it really would help me um, make this stand to where my fenders and my panels are adjustable as I mount them. So it's really kind of cool to be able to use these. This is just square tubing. It's the same square tubing that I used for the big box construction. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. It doesn't have to be complicated. This stand in your shop will give you the opportunity to to spray your vehicle in chunks, but still as an assembly. Um, it, it's, it's really, really a nice convenience. For instance, if you've ever noticed a dry over spray line in behind panels, look here. On this stand, I can spray all of this back here and I can get a nice wet edge in here and get a factory appearance on all of the crevices, including under here, inside the jams, and under the hood, with the hood still attached, and spray the outside at the same time. What a time saver is that? This is interesting. This is why I wanted to kind of show you how I did it. So basically what I did is took measurements from the fenders and I transferred that to square tubing that I just bought from a local metal, metal supply. It wasn't very expensive. So my dimensions are 27 inches high, 50 inches wide, uh, 56 inches or 57 inches long, I think. And that gives me enough of a versatile stand to where I can mount any type of panel under it. Then I used my square tubing and these arms from the Astro stand, which incidentally, you can go to astropneumatic.com if you want to buy these exact things. Um, you can either send an email to customer service or you can just reach out to them like I did, call their 800 number and say, hey, I want to buy some, some extra parts. And they'll sell them to you. And it's a reasonable price too. So that saved me from having to engineer something that, um, that is already there on the market. So these things are really interesting. The square tube just goes through here. 
there's a set screw here on a knob that adjusts and pinches and then your square tubing gets held here of course i handmade all of this stuff that mounts up to my specific panels including my hinges on the back which is a super simple device I've got square tube here into a piece of round conduit and a larger piece of round conduit a piece of flat plate bolted into my uh, hinge location i don't know if you can even see that i'm just gonna let the camera sit there for a little bit make me it's maybe it's gonna adjust and so super simple and i've got a functional hinge and also the cool thing about this is that all of my panels are adjustable so i can set my panel gaps and if i'm spraying I can set the gaps where everything's flush and level and um, maybe it's not too wide. Well, this one, it needs a little bit of work because you could throw an angry cat through that gap right now. But anyway, it gives you the opportunity to set the vehicle up in the panel like it is oriented on the vehicle. Also, gives you backside access for places like this that happen. Now, this made me really sad. This fender was perfect and it fell off, <laughs> it fell off the stand. It fell off the stand. <sighs> I'm okay, I'm fine now, but I was really sad when that happened because it bounced and it made a terrible noise and it made a big dent there. I massaged it a little bit, but eh, anyway, um, I got access to it from the backside. I can fix it. I got skills, I got hammers, and I get polyester surface enhancement material in a bucket in the closet, so uh, we're good to go. There's a couple of things that, that I just wanted to point out. If you can read a measuring tape, you can make a panel stand like this. Now this is enough metal for two stands. I'm thinking it cost me about 150 bucks for this, the one inch square tubing. And I could have got thinner walled square tubing for a little bit less money, but I wanted some mass with this stand. I wanted it to have some substantial mass so it would be solid and not floppy and flimsy. Uh, the, the casters cost me $17 a piece, so um, 70 bucks for the casters. And uh, the knuckles are, if you wanna buy them from, I don't even know, I, I don't wanna say and be wrong, but it was maybe 50 bucks worth of knuckles on here to clamp the square tubing, to hold my stands in place, to make it adjustable. And, and that's what the benefit of, of, of those were. So all told, we've got less than th way less than 300 bucks in this stand. And although that it's not chump change, you know, money's money, but it gives me the ability to, to not only mount any sheet metal on this stand, because all my mounting points are adjustable. It's just like a rotisserie. You just, you have to fab some stuff up, but, but it also gives me the three-dimensional capability of either working, blocking, painting, or polishing my parts before I go into the process of reassembly if I'm doing a restoration. And that is important, where you don't have to stack panels up in the corner. You don't have to, if you're a one-man show, like I work an awful lot, one man at a time, I'm just kind of here by myself a lot, um, it, it matters, it helps. So uh, there's a couple of tools that made this really, really easy to, uh, to manufacture. Can cut drills. These things are freaking brilliant. Now, sizes in this index all the way up to half inch from like tiny, 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 tiny. But if you notice, and if you look really closely, each of these drill ends is stepped. So there's step drills, even up to the half inch size. Look at the size of that. That's, that's a maybe about an eighth of an inch on the tip of that drill. So what does that do? It does two things. It keeps you from having to drill a pilot hole, which locates your bit. And it also has less heat and less friction on the blades of your bit because as one notches through to the next, it changes blades, if you will, for every notch, for every step that's up there. That's a beauty. That's why you can hammer on a step drill so hard. And these things are no different. So when I'm drilling a half inch hole, I don't have to start with an eighth inch pilot, then go to a five sixteenths. It, it's one step, one at a time. My bits last longer. Never mind the fact that can cut bits last longer and it saves me time. I'm a big believer in products that save me time and it's worth, um, it's worth whatever they cost because that's, that's a brilliant design. So anyway, blah, 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 can cut, love it, try them out, you'll love them too. So the other thing is we gotta have a metal melting device. Um, I've been using this Esau uh, Rebel 215IC for quite a while now. One of the cool features of it is that it's got a feature called S-MIG 
You can do typical programmable MIG. It's got a spool gun. Um, you can, it's infinitely adjustable. But in the S MIG setting, it sets the wire speed and the voltage to your particular metal in a couple of milliseconds. So for something like this, I don't have to mess around. Instead, I set it on S MIG and then I start burning metal. And every joint here, um, don't judge my welding too harshly, uh, every joint there, there was no setup. It's computer controlled, really interesting. But with sheet metal, I still like to manually set my MIG um, because of the fact that sometimes in that millisecond that it takes to adjust and pull parameters back and forth, sometimes you can blow through with sheet metal, especially if it's particularly thin. So that's just my advice here. On a larger stock, larger thickness, um, your, the S-MIG works brilliant, but I still like manual control just for my, my own adjustability on, um, on uh, sheet metal. Here's the other thing that helped me make this really simple. Just a couple of magnets. I can set my magnets here. And now I've got a perfect 90 degree angle. And I set one on the other corner and it does the other way. And that locks me in to where I know I've got a really great 90 degree angle on that corner. Super simple, but super simple. And it really helped me fabricate this thing. I probably, I was maybe an hour in when I made the big box, including cuts. Speaking of cuts, um, there's a tool that I've had and I've beat the crap out of this thing for quite a few years. This is my little bench top bandsaw that I got from Eastwood. I got this years ago, I think it was 2015. I haven't even changed the blade on it even though the blades are super simple to change. It probably needs it, but it's adjustable. You can adjust different angles and you can set tension and speed. It's just a great little tool. And I have even, when I was narrowing an axle housing one time, I took it loose from the pivot right here and used it as a handheld. Don't tell Eastwood that. But I used it as a handheld and it, it helped me get a cut to where I couldn't get the axle housing in here. And it really, really is a versatile tool. And, and again, I haven't really <laughs> cared for it that well. But it's been a workhorse for me. So um, between a couple of simple hand tools, a nice MIG welder, and some inexpensive uh, stuff that we can get just about anywhere, I've made my panel stand. So look forward to seeing this quite a bit more, especially if you enroll in the paint education training courses. You're going to see this stand. Um, I welcome you to hit my YouTube channel, meet me on the socials. And um, let's discuss some cool shop stuff. Doesn't take a million bucks. It might take a couple hundred bucks, but it doesn't take a million bucks to have nice stuff in your shop. And it gives you tools in which to do fine craftsmanship. So thanks for watching this. I look forward to talking to you more. And uh, yeah, that's about it. See you soon.